was thinking, how many of these do I have to do before I finally get everything right? And I'm not totally sure, but what I do know is we got ourselves a discraft box in. We also got ourselves like some restock on some MVPs that we're sorting out, but figured we'd do a live unboxing. I opened the little guy. Let me go grab it. Let's see this guy. Because it was just too much for this one. Let's see what we got. We got specialty buzzes, Chandler Fight Surges. Zones. Cool. Let's see what we got in here. Ooh, nice. I'm actually, but you know, a bunch of top ups, but then also, this is the first time we've been able to order, order Athenas that aren't just randomly, luckily sent to us. That's a, these are sweet. Some flight eye zones. That's awesome. People seem to love the Big Z Buzz. Some zones. We'll still say five time. If you check our website, we got some that say not five time, but you know, the opposite. Six time, baby. There I'll get these all sorted out. A little organized. Some pretty sweet stuff that I'm kind of excited for. Some X line stuff. Just some cheaper options. People love buzzes. We can get cheaper buzzes. That people are stoked about that. There are some. These are filthy black zones. Some crystal zones. But these are the get freaky Brody Smith ones. As well as we got roaches. Brody roaches, which are pretty awesome. That's the hardest part about getting all this stuff in. I always want to throw it. I'm like, oh, I've never thrown the titanium heat. Maybe that's the disc. We all deal with it, guys. All right, we're going to mix things up a little bit. Ooh, uh, keys. We're going to go to Sandy Point, which I'm pretty sure I've never taken the vlog. I've been asked for it by some locals, so let's get out of there. Let's go throw some shots. Hopefully they're good. So Sandy is probably one of my favorite courses in the valley. It's just great. It, uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, its main drawback is that it's seasonal. So you'll see when you get out there, you'll be like, oh, this is a sweet little park. It goes up, has some really long holes, some fun stuff. Um, but everybody else also agrees. So the weather, when the weather gets nice, they take all the disc golf baskets out, which I'm not complaining about. I'm just happy to have them, honestly. Um, it would be nice if they were year-round, but I'm not a complainer. Um, but it's one that you got to enjoy when your hands are freezing cold. Luckily, today is a beautiful day. Ooh, I'm excited. Hopefully I can throw some good shots today and not, not be trash like normal. Alright, we're finally here. I have probably 10 videos saying, I fixed my audio, I fixed my video! Um, yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm not gonna say that today. And if I get to post this video because either my computer and formatting allows it or my audio isn't junk, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go buy some Panda Express or something as a, as a victory lap because this has been just a nightmare. If you guys wanna get into YouTube, it is a nightmare. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's great. Uh, anyway, uh, I'll get you guys teed up. Since this is gonna be our first time as a channel, um, all three of us going to Sandy Point. I'll walk you through each hole, talk about them, uh, explain what the shot I'm trying to hit is and what we're doing. All right. All righty, guys. Welcome to Sandy Point. I'm going to pull up a U disc. Oh, I don't have service here. We'll see if I can make one. But um, this is hole one. We'll start at hole one. Ooh, let's see if it'll let me do it. It says 509, and it's a par three. Um, I know a couple people to get there. I'm not one of them. That is really good. I like never land here. 
I'm normally, I'm normally like 100 feet back hitting a tree. So this is kind of a smash for me. I never toed this. That would have been my first two ever on camera. That was so close. Alrighty, so after hole one, which is on grass, you like move up onto this hill here. And the hill actually stays year round, which is pretty sweet. But you get a little bit of hiking in. It's nothing like Lado Gulch, which I hope to take you guys here hopefully tomorrow, maybe in a couple of weeks. But you definitely get a little hiking around. It's so nice out. Oh, so nice. Hole two is up on this hill. I need to start running again. I'm so out of shape. It's straight ahead. You just says 302. And you're like, Sean, that's a 12 speed. And there's a little bit of a tailwind. But don't fool. There's a little bit of an uphill. And I've been suckered into going to like an explorer before. And I always come up short. <sighs> there's this ravine on the right side. It's just trash. And if you see that like gully coming down the hill, it basically like ends at the basket. You might be able to see the top of the white. <laughs> but we're just trying to throw it up there straight with a stable-ish disc. Okay. So we're not in a bad spot. Basket's right up there. I'm gonna turn you around. If you land in that, you're sticking your foot in a sticker bush and it's absolutely trash. And then you'll hate playing disc golf. You'll wanna go home. It's just a nightmare. It's a nightmare situation. Also, for those wondering, I'm still putting with the Rainmakers. Let me go up a little bit. I have so many videos of me putting with the Rainmakers and talking about them. They're good putters. I don't know what to tell you. Even though I'll probably miss this because it's a straddle uphill. There we go. That's such a good drive to mess that up. Fortunate part, I, I felt like I felt like I easily could have made that putt, but I'm I'm bad at this game. Um, part uh, hole three. This is 270 feet, 17 feet down the hill. So I go a get freaky zone because I want something to stick. And I just try to throw it out to the left, out to the left here, crash on in right where I want it to. A lot of times I go, I'll go stand still. Oh, that's too much. Okay, we got a look. This is kind of a good look to see how stable these rainmakers are. Granted, I've used them for a week and a half, week. Let's see. A little bit of a headwind. That's so good. hard to find footing for like the tripod. Huh. Dang it. A lot of threes. My other, uh, my Rainmaker's pin high. Uh, hole four, par four, 561 feet on U-disc. Everybody gets tempted with the backhand. There's water in that lake now, in that reservoir. So, we're gonna go with forehand to kind of stay stable. Heiser back into the hill. Just to be safe. Hit up high. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see it. Uh, Cause I don't know what kind of camera angle we'll have when we get up there. But the green is probably like a like a 25 foot circle. It's smaller than the actual circle. Um, 
there's a drop off on the left. It's pretty rough <laughs> on the right. And so you're just trying to go something to hit and stick. This is a pretty great spot. Um, I'm very happy with this. We'll probably go zone again. There's a little bit of a wind coming off the, the water there. So let's go zone forehand out to the right and spike it in. Oh. I think we're probably 230. Sit down, please. Thank goodness. Okay, we sat. I should have a punt. It's pretty sweet. It always feels good to get the uh, shorter par fours. I mean, hole one is a five hole six, and it's a par three. And this is 60 feet longer and a par four, so you get an extra stroke, basically. Or not that much. Feels really bad when you miss it. You roll down the hill. Gosh, it feels. Alrighty, first birdie today. Now I'm going to show you what I was looking at when I was putting. If I had aired it, I'm going down there. And I have done that before, it's the worst. Alright, hole 5, 257. Part 3, this is where dreams come to die. You go forehand to hit the hill, there's all kinds of little rocks up there. And the likelihood of your disc flipping and rolling down that hill to the left is not zero. So. I think that's all right. But then you do this wait and sit and you see if it comes down the hill. I think we're okay. Uh, you can see how close it was to rolling there. Maybe acing too, but definitely rolling. So. Alrighty, hole six. Oh, putting in scores for it already. 250. Three feet, it's just a backhand hyzer. Nothing too crazy. I'm just gonna go my Color Glow Draco. And I just try to throw it as hard as I can at that hill, like that rock up there, and just have it fade in. Basket's around the corner. It looks like some people have been teeing off on the right here, but I feel like that makes the angle like way easier. So I'm probably gonna get my feet wet, but. I thought I did it, but I didn't. <laughs> Barely got around the corner here. Dang it! Hole seven. This is the shortest hole in the course, 187 feet. I'm gonna go quantum solstice. And you're just trying to grab a mid or a putter and hit the gap. There's also this big spike hyzer over the left, but I've been working on this, so we'll try this. You like to see a little luck. Nice big backstop back here makes it kind of hard to mess up. Idaho flip. Okay, from the shortest hole in the course to the longest, this one's like 587 feet or something like that. 594. Um, all of this sand plays as hazard in tournaments sometimes they'll play it as ob sometimes we play it as ob um, there's definitely water which is ob but we normally play the sand as hazard just for speed of play and everything um so i'm gonna go venom a little bit of a headwind you might be able to hear that on the mic but just something stable out there try to crash in on the grass That's all I'm trying to do, is just get out there on the, on the safe. All right, I got my 300-ish feet off the tee. I know you're at a bit of an angle, but 
just up there. I'm trying to follow this canal full of trees up there. So I'm gonna go forehand at that left tree with a little Annie with this Draco and trying not to skip down low. Or that, or that, or that, okay. Got him about a disco. All right, so after the worst shot of the day, I'm gonna go over this out of bounds with a really, really stable splice and skip up at the basket. At least, at least that's the plan. No! Second worst shot of the day, first bogey. Fourth throw on a par four, so we gotta put it in or first bogey of the day, which is more likely. I'm not mad at that, I'm mad at my other shots. This hole nine, 310 feet. We're gonna go forehand. The tee pad's normally here, but they moved it over because it was destroying the grass. The angle's a little bit harder, so we'll try going a straighter Firebird-like disc. But it's just kind of a rip out there. Sand's also hazard. long 30 feet. All right, so I got a par, which to be fair, I kind of deserved. Um, pull 10, 263 feet. There's out of bounds and hazard behind it. And then that bathroom's kind of out of bounds as well. And then right. So you're just trying to throw a straight tunnel shot, with a little fade that'll grab the grass so it doesn't skip out. Little headwind, dang. Not what you want. Feed stable and short. All right, so that's for sure long, but it'll have like a par putt. I cool, I got like a little rail grind out there. That was pretty sweet. Should have gone zone or something. Okay. Hole 11, I don't know, 300 feet? 282. Um, the whole drive parking lot area is out of bounds. The most common play you'll see is a backhand skip shot into the green. There is a forehand, power forehand. A um, little bit of a tailwind, so I'm just gonna go a Venom over and try to get the skip. Maybe no skip, maybe just air. You can get curved and ruin your day. A little tight. All right, this is hole 12. Yeah, uh, 325 feet. And I know what you're thinking, like, Sean, that's a 12 speed. I keep saying this. This is just a little uphill. I've played this course probably 20, 30 times. And I have one birdie, because I always try to down throw my shot. And I never overshoot it, but it's a little peninsula island up there. So, I'm trying to smash it with something stable. That's gonna be too low, but that should be in bounds unless it gets rocked. Yeah, that'll be in bounds. My 12 speed's over there. I wanted something a little bit more stable to kind of skip up here, but I'll take that on the island pin high. Hang out there. I deserve that one. That was pretty disgusting. 
disgusting. Hole 13, this is probably the hardest hole on the course. 450 feet, par three. Um, there's just a big wall of trees in the middle of this, unless you have 500 feet over the spike or a flex forehand for 450 feet of power. Like this is a, I don't want to say impossible get, but it's a very difficult get. One thing, the one thing to miss. I should have just thrown like a fairway. Why don't I throw fairways more? All right. This is like an impossible gap. I'm trying to go flex forehand under the branches of the destroyer. And if peninsulas, it's out of bounds is likely. I'm just trying to save, get off those bogeys. What? I didn't think I could go long there. skip down there if not I mean I can't go for it with the water the tap in all right I don't know what hole we're on 15 we're almost there 293 feet is all it says but it's over kind of out of bounds the whole way. The Ampad pace plays from down there and it's a little bit more of a straight shot, but the pro pad plays from here and you're just trying a big hyzer, crash in, get through some trees, hopefully. There's also a flex forehand line, but we'll turn the back now. Hit the tree. pad, and it's basically just like a zone forehand or like a super straight backhand, hard to hit. Let's go see if I'm in bounds and where. Guy, yeah, like you either hit the tree and come in, or you go. You have just enough power to get around it, and you're parked. You can also get caught out of bounds. It's very, very close. I don't have the solution to this one yet. That's the solution, baby. Just a really short putt. Gotta hope this footage isn't corrupted. <laughs> that was awesome. That was pretty sweet. This is hole 16, par four. This is one of the easier par fours. Um, 493 feet. A little bit of a tailwind, so I'm gonna go flippy cloudbreaker. I'm gonna aim it at that tree and try to fade off, fade in. We'll see how it goes. trying to do. 
I normally like being a little more left so I can go forehand in, but I'll take a zone up shot in. Backhand. Any day. Yeah, like five, six paces uphill. Maybe seven. Thirty. Hey guys, we're almost there. Two oh eight uh, feet, which is actually the area code of Boise, which is pretty sweet. Um, hole seventeen, par three. It's like a little island up there, so you're trying to throw like a some sort of hyzer through these trees and stick it onto the green. Too much hyzer, push along. Hopefully it skipped in there. Gonna be out. Um, I saw a big flare. It must have rolled. Uh, I don't know. Just trying not to go out of bounds, man. Sometimes I can be such a good putter, but most of the time I am the worst putter. <sighs> That'd have been nice. Dang. That would have been really nice. All right, this is hole 18. This is one of the harder par threes. I, I feel like I've said that a lot, but it's 475 feet on U disc. Everybody's gonna be, I know it's not. Just what U disc says. Um, and the only way I've gotten it to the island, which I have a couple of times, is you've had to have this wind, this wind, a little bit of Anheuser at that big left tree, and have it get carried and then skip off the concrete onto the tee or onto the green. But most of the time that doesn't happen, so. Get low to the whistle blow. That might be in. I forgot to say, everything in the parking lot is out of bounds, so everybody takes really big scores here. Yeah, I, th I think I've taken like eights and stuff out here. Sandy Point's one of my like favorite places to play. I just really like it. We're walking up together to see if I get a three or a four on this hole. Um, there's a lot of hard par threes, and the par fours, there's a couple of generous ones which make you feel cool. Like, was that hole like four, five, four? Oh, I'm out of bounds. Ah, oh. and then there's holes like this, par threes that feel like par fours. So I gotta take it on this strip of land, all the way up here. I could maybe save the three, but probably not. Kind of what I expect. All right, I let myself a tap in, which was nice for bogey. I think that pulls me to even or plus one, plus two, in that range. I would, didn't play great. I'd, that's what it does out here. You get like a couple of bad holes that explode your score. Anyway, if you're local and you haven't played Sandy Point yet, I've talked to people and they're like, I haven't played Sandy Point, I haven't played Little Gulch. Get out here, man, it's the best. It's so good and it closes at like the end of March. So you gotta make sure you get yourself out here. Um, yeah, that's all I got. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I personally enjoyed playing out here today. Um, I really hope that all the footage came through. Uh, like, subscribe, share this around, share this with your friends, share this on your Facebook. It helps so much. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. I bought this new camera, I bought this new mic, and it's been trash terrible. So hopefully it, that turns itself around. Um, and yeah, if you didn't like it, Keep that to yourself. Only cool comments in the bottom.